Hey everyone, and welcome to the happiest hour on earth. It is the weekend of Halloween, and last week we did a very spooky episode. We talked about real life ghost encounters at Disneyland. It was pretty creepy, and I was very surprised that there were that many. This week, as we are still in Halloween spooky time, we decided to talk about something that is a little bit spooky, but also something that is kind of happening right here and right now. We're going to be talking about the idea of Disneyland wanting to scare us. Uh, we saw Zombie Cap um, recently at the Oogie Boogie Bash, and we're wondering if Disneyland's going to go more that horror route. Um, we're going to discuss our thoughts and our opinions on this, uh, what we would like to see, what we wouldn't like to see, and see what next year's Oogie Boogie Bash might be like, because it might be a little more scary than normal. So I am so excited that you guys are here, and let's just jump into this. All right, so like Chris said, tonight we're gonna be talking about the possibility of Disney scaring us a little bit more at the Oogie Boogie Bash next year. Yeah it's already starting this year so yeah. who knows what they're gonna do next year crazy but for this second spooky uh episode that we have we decided to make a drink called the poison apple teeny this is from carthay circle in california adventure so it's a really easy drink to make and yeah. it's got the spooky um evil queen vibe to it so had to bring this one on for this episode. Do you want to give it a try right now? Let's try this thing. Let's give it a Cheers. shot. Cheers. Mmm. Oh, that's so really good. good. Yeah. This is apple whiskey, Crown Royale, um, apple pucker, which is a sour apple um, liqueur, and then... Um, cranberry juice. Cranberry juice. And that's it. Three things. So super, super easy. Really good. Yeah. On the sweeter side, it's kind of... You know, yeah, a little sweet. Kind of sweet, very heavy on the apple, but I love apple stuff, so I yeah. think it's really tasty. As for the snack, you might have seen last week we made the Maleficent churro, which was delicious. Big fan of that one, but this time I decided to make one that I saw is in I think Tomorrowland at one of the churro carts there. Apparently, they have one that's like pumpkin flavored and. There's like a really tasty looking sauce that you get with it there. I did not make that, but um, I did just make a regular churro with the cinnamon sugar uh, coating. And then there's the stuff that we got from Trader Joe's because we get everything from Trader Joe's. Sure. It's just like pumpkin pie spice. So I just like added that in with the cinnamon sugar and mixed it in there. And it smells super, super good. I know. Don't know if it's anything like what they do in the parks but it, it's gonna be we had to give it a shot halloween -y. we had to give it a shot let's yeah. try it let's try it cheers i taste mainly the cinnamon yeah i do too and i thought i added so much of the pumpkin pie in there it's slightly different a little bit maybe that was really good but maybe i didn't like oh, man. spread it out evenly maybe there'll be more pumpkin along the way yeah i don't ooh, know that is, i mean just a regular it is really good anyway, anyway, yeah so. you can't go wrong with just uh Regular churro. Okay, so that was amazing. I mean, honestly, the fact that you could just go down to Smart and Final, pick up those Tio Pepe churros, and and make them in like four minutes, so maybe five minutes, because you have to so do the preheat. But it's it's amazing, guys. Yeah. If you haven't done this before, you need to get and on it. And you're stocked up when you buy one box of them. There's like twenty five. Yeah, it's twenty. Which yeah. lasts quite a while. And like I must say, Disneyland has so many different types of churros right now. Like if you look on the list for like the Halloween snacks on the Disneyland site, they're in like every land. There's like a different new kind of churro. Mm -hmm. So I've been having fun experimenting a little bit, but there's even more types that we could have tried making. Are they going to be Christmas churros? Because Ooh. these 25 might last to like, uh, man, yeah, yeah, that's true. So on to the main topic. Um, this kind of came out of nowhere. We just started seeing videos of zombie zombie Captain America um, in Avengers Campus. Mm -hmm. And there was there's that show. What if uh, Marvel's what if? And one of the episodes is what if a zombie invasion happened, you know, in New York or all around the world and half of the Avengers 
became zombies and half of them didn't and they had to fight uh, each other and everything. And so that um, that character experience that we started seeing float around the Internet was based on this Marvel uh, episode of What If? And I mean, it honestly kind of came out of nowhere because Oogie Boogie Bash started. There wasn't yeah. anything about zombie like Captain America. Everybody. And then, yeah, out of nowhere, like, it was like, Reddy oh, my scared. gosh, here's this uh, here's this zombie Captain America experience out in the open. The first time I think Disney has really done like a horror like experience, a, like truly scary character yeah. meet and greet thing. Yeah, and it's pretty it's pretty crazy. He is confined in a certain area. Um, I would assume that's kind of mainly COVID protocols, right? I don't think you could have um, characters walk around. I mean, they do do like mazes right now at some theme parks, but um, a lot of the meet and greets right now are behind um, ropes. But I also like that idea um, for something that is a little more horror at Disney um, that someone's not, you know, walking around and everything. But we'll get to that a little bit later. But something that actually happened before we started seeing this was that Certain guests, um, I don't know if it was if it was magic key holders or just other guests that had recently visited the Disney parks, started getting surveys. And in the survey, it asked if people would want to um, have a little more like adult horror element to the parks. And that was a couple weeks before the zombie cap. And so I'm guessing they got a good response out of this because they ended up having this uh, zombie cap. And I think that this was really like a trial for them. Mm -hmm. They wanted, they, they got some input from people and then they said, let's just do this and see what the Disney community feels about this. So we'll have one horror character during a special ticketed event um, and let's see the reactions. And from what it looks like, um, it looks like people really, really love it. I mean, I think the character design is really great. Um, yeah. And yeah, he looks pretty scary. Pretty scary, yeah. And, it, and he it's acts like a zombie. Like a zombie, yeah. I'm actually, like, super shocked. And so um, so this rolled out, and I think overall the reactions have been pretty positive. Mm -hmm. I think it's cool that they're doing that. I mean, it makes sense for a Halloween party, Halloween-themed party in Disney, to maybe add in a little bit more scary stuff, especially yeah. having it in California Adventure as opposed to Disneyland. I feel like it just makes a little bit more sense to have mm -hmm. the scarier stuff happening over there. I mean, Disneyland being, you know, primarily made for kids. I mean, you know, we know we all know it's not because it's for all of us. But, yeah. um, you know, at the root of it, Disneyland is family friendly. So I think... It's good to have it over in California Adventure. Yeah. And I think it would be cool to incorporate some more stuff next year for sure. Yeah. And like you were saying, I do think that it's good to have them contained. A little more contained. Yeah. Um, and like in their Specified designated areas. spot. Yeah, yeah. Like in a particular part of the park and a little bit more confined. Like. I'm just going to be real here. I am not a fan of getting scared. Like I am not into like jump scares, like haunted houses, any of that stuff. I'm just not like same here. 100% yeah. not interested <laughs> in going to those things. I do not like getting scared. And one time we ended up at magic Ooh. mountain, which is kind of like, uh, you know, the six flags on the way to Disneyland. Um, <laughs> and it happened to be at Halloween time. And, and we, we, were, are, we like, went in like we were, we're like, we're leaving before, before they <laughs> let all the, the creeps out at night. Like, the we're creeps. just going to we're just going to do our rides, get out before it's dark, because that's when they like let everyone free or whatever. Oh my God. Well, we got stuck in a long line like right before that time. And it was not anywhere near the exit of the park. So we had to make our way through all the scary people that are just roaming around waiting to like jump at your face. Yeah. I was clinging to him like none other. And Which we wasn't bolted. even better because I was a yeah, scared we were both scared. Here, so and I was the like, group, oh. whole group that we were with were all just terrified. We were like, let's get out of here. And we just like bolted. So all that is to say, <laughs> I don't like jump scares. And I think if they're going to have scary things happening in, Dis or in California Adventure, to have it 
in a particular area and maybe not have people wandering around. I think yeah. that that's more the theme parky thing to do, like Great America and Six Flags and yeah. not you know Knott's Berry Farm and all those. I think they're good at doing that stuff. I think Disney should keep it to like having some scary characters and meet and greets and stuff. But nothing that's gonna like make you jump out of your skin, you know. You know, and I think there's that's a market. Me. I think there's a market for this, right? Because I think if you want to get really, really scared, mm-hmm. every theme park goes all out scary, mm-hmm. and so I think they're competing to be the scariest. Yeah. Now, for people like us, like Oogie Boogie Bash, we haven't actually been. Um, but yeah. Oogie Boogie Bash, there's a lot of spooky, fun things where yeah, you can, like, more meet on, villains, more on this. but it's not scary. But I honestly. Would I'm, like I'm about be, that. I would love to do. I would love to do that. Bash. But I would like to do a in between thing, right? Like I don't like getting scared to death by these people that pop out. But I would like an in between of what Disneyland is, and maybe one of those things, kind of like a kind of like a PG version. Yeah, you know, right? So like not like <laughs> yeah, not jump jump scare. Oh my <laughs> gosh, I'm literally gonna have a heart attack. But something where I get a little creeped out. I get a little spooky or a little spooked. But I'm not, um, it's like not a toned like, down I version of it. Right now. And maybe that's a market that like, I don't think has really been tapped into. Yeah. It's like a middle ground an adult that doesn't like getting scared, but. And it could be good for like, thrill. you know, preteens, teenagers that yeah. are, that are more on the, like on the fence of getting like scared out of their minds, yeah. but they still want to do something that's kind of like creepy. You and know? that's, that's what I like about this idea is because I'm like, it does amp the the scare level up a little but it's not to that main point that yeah. we hate like yeah. that i wouldn't want to go to and i think that disney is smart they're not i don't think that they would go as far yeah as to do what some of the other theme parks are doing because i think that a lot of like parents and like you know a lot of the crowd that otherwise would go to some of these events might be like um i'm not ready for that my kid's not ready for that we're gonna skip it you know yeah so I think that they know the demographic and they know exactly what those people would be into. So I think yeah. I think that they're going to do a good job. I, I agree. So kind of with that thought in mind, what would you say is the possibility now that they've kind of dabbled in this in this one specific, you know, region of the park? I, I mean, to me, I feel like they're definitely going to maybe not go f- full into you know like actual like mazes or like quote-unquote scare zones or something Mm -hmm. but what do you think the possibility is next oogie boogie bash that comes up do you think we're going to see something you know we're definitely going to see zombie cap again i think Mm -hmm. but do you think that there's going to be more i definitely think there's going to be more i mean if there's been a even slight like positive reaction to zombie cap being there I think Disney's going to jump on it and be like, okay, how else can we do something similar to this and draw even more people that like that kind of thing? You know, like yeah. what other characters can we bring in that are, you know, scarier? And I don't know if they'll go with more like Avengers characters and do more of that zombie thing or right. if they'll just bring in totally different stuff. I mean, and that's the interesting thing too. Like guess. when you said characters, there is this like, huge subculture of disney villain love right oh yeah but then also a lot of disney villains a lot of them are very scary but then it's like how do you do they're just creepy in their aura like it's Mm -hmm. not a jump scare type thing so yeah how do you bring that about and um we did actually before we filmed this episode we did talk about you know some ideas that we could definitely see happening in the parks but Mm -hmm. before we get to that what would your like stipulations be like if they decide to do a scarier um, event, like to amp it up a little bit, like what what would you be OK with Disney doing and what wouldn't you be OK with Disney doing? Like in terms of like like what level of scary characters or in terms of. Just like, like everything, like what they do with the scary characters, just like all I could of it. always, I, like I could start. Like one of my stipulations would be, I definitely think that it needs to be for a special event where people know that there are going to be scares, right? Oh, like yeah. so, definitely at Oogie Boogie Bash. Yeah, it can't I was just gonna be, say it should be at the event 
But there should definitely be designated zones Mm -hmm. where it's going to be scarier and people know exactly like, okay, over in that section, like Hollywood land or, you know, like people have to seek out to find it. Yeah. It's not just going to be (laughs) there ready to get. You're not going to be walking with your kid and be like, oh my. Yeah, exactly. Like, I think when you walk in the park, walk down, uh, you know, Buena Vista Street and stuff, it's just kind of like the fun Oogie Boogie themed stuff, you know, like the fun side of it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And Overall, maybe yeah, it should stay kind of that way. But if you go to Hollywood Land or Avengers Campus or, you know, some of those areas that we've talked about, um, there's going to be some spookier stuff happening mm-hmm. there. So people know exactly where to go to find the scary. Exactly. <laughs> and before, you know, as we're like talking about this idea, I originally had the thought of, Maybe you do Oogie Boogie Bash. You have certain dates for Oogie Boogie Bash. And then you have certain dates that there will be scarier things for. But then as I was thinking about it, I was like, if everything's designated in certain areas, you might as well just have them, you know, for every Boogie Bash. Because what if, you know, what if a family goes there and, you know, they want one or the other and then they can't because of timing and all that stuff. No, I just will just have it happen for every Oogie Boogie Bash event, but mm-hmm. have it in designated areas. And you know that, you know, if you're walking from place to place, you're not going to encounter those unless you specifically go there. And Think one idea out, might, yeah. which might be cool is maybe have a couple of, you know, experiences that are a little scary, but maybe have different levels. Mm-hmm. Just, you know. Yeah. What, you know, what What are the kids, you know, going to like? What are they not going to like? If they go through one level, it kind of sounds funny, but honestly, if you go through one level and they're fine with that and they want a little more thrill, maybe you could then decide, mm-hmm. I could go here or I can't, you know. Yeah. Um, and I think that'd be cool. I think that would I be too. I think it's a family friendly approach to scare nights. Yeah. Yeah. Have like something that's maybe just base level scary, just like mm-hmm. something to kind of spook you out a little bit and then there's something else you can go to that's a notch up Mm -hmm. and like we've talked about before there's a couple of areas that are not really being touched right now Mm -hmm. some empty buildings and things where they could potentially put things like this not exactly sure like what they would do not like a haunted house of course but like there's the hyperion theater that's not in use they're not having any of the plays or anything right now Mm -hmm. so that's empty um the uh stage 17 so yeah right now stage 17 i think that's where he wants to be a millionaire used to be way back in the day and i I went there i never knew about that Um, i never saw it (laughs) yeah it was like like in california adventures like weird awkward teenage phase (laughs) not even teenager it was like a weird just awkward like, it was like it came it, they're like california adventure and like from the get-go california adventure was super awkward <laughs> um but it was and right next bob to Iger superstar saved. limo yeah and then bob Iger saved everything <laughs> but so stage 17 right now is being uh, um it's a it's a marvel themed store i believe right next to monsters inc we haven't been inside i didn't I write the name did down not but even it is a little it. store that's a building that, you know, could definitely be used. I don't think it needs to be another shop, especially during like a ticketed event like that. Yeah. It's um, kind of just like a placeholder right now. It seems yeah. like it's just like, oh, we'll just put a store there. It's like, yeah, if you can't go to the to store there. in Mar- like in uh, Avengers Campus, like you could always find more Avengers stuff here. I'm like, that's kind of weird. So they that. could easily just yank all that stuff out and put in some kind of a, I don't know. Yeah. What, what do you think it would be? You mentioned like a well, maze or. I mean, there's meet and greets kind of in other areas. So what else do you really do? Yeah. So the the other place, and we could we can maybe start with this one too. Another place that we thought, you know, not just Hyperion Stage 17, um, but I think the Redwood Creek Trail. And right now there there's currently the Villains Grove, mm-hmm. which looks really incredible. cool, incredible, like looks really cool, really really cool. But maybe take that place, um, have the same similar idea but amp it up just a little bit. So it is kind of like, maybe that's that stage one mm-hmm. that you go to, um, you know, kind of like, it's like a walk scary, through. but you know, not terrible. Yeah. Um, yeah. You're like walking along the trail and it's like, I mean, it already looks so cool looks and like cool. spooky. 
um, with like, you know, it's dark, but there's like candles hanging and like lanterns and that kind of thing, I feel like. Um, And I just think it would be cool to have like kind of designated parts of that trail and like that walkthrough that are for like specific villains. Like maybe this would be a good place to have like all the Disney villains. Yeah. You know, like. Breaking it down by like yeah Disney Marvel and stuff yeah. like this could be this a could good be the spot Disney for... zone of like Disney villains right yeah so it could be like Maleficent and Jafar uh, Doctor Facilier like yeah some of those and like like meet and greets like kind of like down a ways a little bit but each, still each in their own zone and then yeah. have like some of their minions kind of like guarding the entrance to that area or yeah. something like that. And maybe like a little bit of a pop out with those, but like, yeah, I, I like the idea of, um, I don't like the idea of like a maze where mm-hmm. you have to keep going forward and you know, things are going to pop out at you or whatever. No, this would you. be like a villain meet and greet, but you don't really know exactly where they are. So you have to explore, you have to explore and you could, you could, you know, choose whether you want to go to the right or the left, um, mm-hmm. even though like one area might look a little more spooky, but you have to go and explore and figure out where these villains are. And along the way, maybe you'll see like some spooky stuff, maybe a, a little bit of a, you know, a little bit of a jump, but not too much. And then you'll actually have those uh, villains there. So like, you know, we could have, yeah, Maleficent there and her minions like Dr. Facilier could be there. And like there could be like the friends on the other side, like kind of that swampy vibe. Mm-hmm. Um, that will be fun. And then I, I was also thinking like one villain that we don't see a lot, um, but he is very prominent in Disney culture, I feel like. Um, and and the nice thing about Redwood Creek Trail is that there's like multiple levels. There's like a whole bunch to explore. But maybe if you like go up to one of the bigger levels, maybe you see Chernabog. Um, and maybe this isn't like a character meet and greet where you like take a photo like Chernabog from, you know, Fantasia. Um, but maybe he's like this big, not an animatronic because that's hard to move, but maybe like a big um, moving like character that takes multiple people to to control him. But maybe you could see him and like have the lightning flashing like there yeah. already is at um, at Villains Grove. But just have him and seeing like a big character like that would be creepy, but not like spooky because he's not popping out at you but you could just kind of admire him from afar that'd be pretty awesome. yeah that would be really cool ah, that would I be fun that. i think i, I think that, that redwood creek area is perfect for something it's like so this prime. it's yeah. just like a clean slate it's just like outside you can really do anything with it it's just like really being can. out in the woods kind of yeah oh yeah it's a good it's a good spot for something like that oh, i just had sure. another thought yeah. And I don't know why I thought of it or like what you would do with it, but I feel like having like r- like some of the spookier rides be more of a thing, like like characters from mm. rides, like like the three ghosts from Haunted Mansion, like oh, characters that could be dressed cool like there them, too. Oh my have gosh. them in there or somewhere within this. Yeah. And maybe or, have like those ones the behind like the gravestone. Yeah, maybe like the bride could pop out somewhere and all that stuff and and you know maybe that's not like, fitting for that area you know, just because that's what? all like the movie villains maybe they should be somewhere like, else in the park but i just feel like it would be cool to have some like ride representation i, I like too. that i honestly do really like that and i feel like that's something that um it'll be fun I to see like did, in real life because yeah. you're just used to seeing like those like you know like the pictures yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah. whatever i just think it would be so fun to see these guys oh yeah I'm sure. <laughs> yeah but honestly like i think people really equate movies and classic attractions together, right? Yeah. Like the classic movies. Yeah. So I don't think anyone would be weirded out by having, um, having those classic, you know, or bring characters. some nostalgia yeah. and bring back some tower of terror characters, Bell some bellhops <laughs> or something in the same area awesome. as with haunted mansion. I don't know. And I, I mean, oh man, wouldn't that be great if you could have just, during that time, they like switch it back to Tower of Terror for the spookiness. Oh, I wish great. it was that easy to flip cool. a switch. Yeah, here we like, go. For this hey, event, they do it for Tower Monsters After Dark, which is already another, which is already another uh, sign that they are trying to. This Bring was this was a couple spooky. years ago yeah, that they did true. Monsters After Dark at um, at Guardians Missions Breakout, but they were 
I think that was a big test. Okay, like halfway through the day, let's switch it to Monsters After Dark. Let's see the reaction. Okay, people like that. Let's try to do zombie Trying cat. Trying to ease try in to, a little yeah, bit yeah. more of the scary to see what people think of it. Yeah. So another thing that we were kind of thinking of is, I mean, I definitely think that California Adventure is where this stuff should be happening for Oogie Boogie Bash, you know? But something that could be interesting would be utilizing Pirate's Lair yeah. in Disneyland, which used to be Tom Story's Island, of course. It's such... I mean, I haven't been over there in so long. I'm actually really bummed because I love that area. Yeah, it's really I just cool. think it's so fun and, like, adventure-filled and cute. It's just kind of, like, a hassle to get over there. But I feel like for an event, like, Halloween-themed... It would be fun to have like a pirate, like a Tortuga style, like scary pirate yeah. attraction. And that would be there. easy because they wouldn't really have to do anything with the props. They could just get a few actors yeah. and kind of do that. And the nice thing is that the the thing we hated about having anything scary at Disneyland is because Disneyland as a park is supposed to be, um, you know, very f family friendly and the nice thing about Pirates Co or Pirates Lair um, is that it's totally separate. Totally separate. Like you could, you could, t you could tell people, like tell you know the family who's coming with the kids. Hey, by the way, this is a scary mm. experience at night. Are you sure you want to come over here? And they could say, Oh no, we'll check it out tomorrow, or we'll go tonight. And then at night, you could have some fun kind of spooky experiences on the island. It's honestly perfect. It's built for that. I just I would have to say. had a great idea. That could be the Disneyland one. Ghosts. Well, yes. No, that would be awesome. And this would probably be much too hard for them to do and like <laughs> figure out how to make it like a every night thing. But to use the ship... And turn it into the Black uh, Pearl. Oh. And you can ride on the Black Pearl. So, and then you like kind of. As, as just there. part oh of an event. Gosh. No, because I mean, it doesn't go like from one side oh. to the other, but just to go on a ride around it as like. And there's some as, like, spooky an event. things. Oh my gosh, that'd be so Wouldn't great. That be That's so the cool. Columbia, right? I, would, I think yeah. so, yeah. Mark Twain's not the Mark one, Twain. obviously. Yeah, yeah. Colum I, I believe it's called the Columbia. Yeah, it's but, Oh my gosh. Yeah, well, yeah, they, they use both of them. They use both of them. Yeah. Columbia yeah. is the Black Pearl and Fanta uh, Fantasmic. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Right. That and, used then, to and then Mark Twain is where everyone's throwing the little streamers. Yeah, exactly. My favorite. Yeah, so good. Um, oh but I just think gosh, that would be so fun. cool experience where everything, like, you could walk, you don't have to fear about going to disneyland you just do your whole thing but if you want certain experiences on the water yeah on the rivers of america wouldn't that be so a ship fun and because it would uh, kind of go lair. like in conjunction with, with the pirate's lair like like maybe you obviously yeah, like, get on from the then, lair and, yeah and then you're on like okay. jack sparrow could be on there maybe barbosa could be on there yeah and maybe Davey jones you, like, just some of the some of the okay Ooh. maybe all the main villains from all the movies could i be like on that there. oh <gasps> dude, that would that... be so fun but it would be really hard for them to like destroy the ship and turn it into the black well, pearl and then yeah. like set it up for phantasmic and like well you know, honestly whatever else yeah you for. could only you could always do that on days where you're not doing phantasmic right and and you don't that's have to true. like mess up the ship you can just put like the sail on for that night or something mm -hmm. uh, but that'd be a really cool experience that i could see those things happening happening in disneyland i don't want anything else like i don't yeah. want anything in the main lands that people walk around yeah but having it separate like that i'm curious i would be down for what i want to hear you guys' thoughts let us know because um I think that would be that's something I would be fine with. And yeah, I don't like I would scary love, things. Yeah. yeah. Like I would probably be really scared, but I would trust I think I would trust Disney enough to know yeah. that they're not gonna like know their limits. Yeah, like they'll yeah. know exactly how much is too much. Exactly. And like stop before that point. You know, like they'll scare us with the characters and have them kind of just make you feel like you're really there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But not like And kind of have them trained where like if they see someone of a certain age come by or if anyone don't looks too scared too. Yeah, yeah like yeah. don't zone in on someone like a kid who's yeah. like obviously creeped out you know like i feel like yeah. some of the There's other a teenager places, being a little 
you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Maybe creep all them out some Yeah, more. acting all like tough. But the Scare other up. places, Scare I feel up. like, don't care how scared you are. It's like they almost yeah, they, target they, you if you yeah, are more scared. I feel like Disney would do the opposite. Like, they're there to creep you out if you want it. But if you're scared, like, they're probably going to be like, okay, just back off, you know? Yeah. That would be fun. I'd be down. I'd be so down. I oh, like man, that. I wish we ended on that point because that's actually pretty great. It but... just came to me when we were talking about pirates. <sighs> I was like, wow, girl. Oh, it's so good. Because the, the water's right there. Yeah. Oh, it's so good. We, we talked about a couple other ideas. I do want to swing back around to something like that after we talk about these ideas, because um, these could kind of, you know, go pretty quick. Mm-hmm. And I want to end on that. Like, that was such a good note. But um, <laughs> so we were talking like, I don't know how you switch the Hyperion Theater into sort of walk through thing, because I know mm-hmm. there's a lot of seats bolted down. I don't know what their um, what the future holds for the Hyperion Theater, um, but that is a nice big open space. R.I.P. Aladdin. I know. I know. I mean, Frozen too, but Aladdin will always be. But my Aladdin will always. There. I it's know. The best. I know. Um, but maybe they could use part of that for something. I think this might be a really good area for like a Marvel themed um, meet and greet slash like a little bit of a uh, scare, um, just because you're right next to you know um, Guardians of the Galaxy. Um, so I'm thinking, you know, you could definitely leverage a lot more like zombie Avengers like they already have. I mean, half of the Avengers team became zombies. So definitely do that. What they if are... they came out with like, sorry to interrupt you. No, no, what no. if they came out with like a new show that was villain themed, like like the Avengers, like they just came up with a whole new story to have a show that's like scary. Yeah. Well, I mean, I could see that. I could definitely see that happening other ideas with like, like what if and stuff. You know? yeah, 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 and like you know, the what if show I think is going to have probably a second season, and they could definitely do Maybe one they where like villains on. like kind of win with everything, and you have a lot of your famous villains. But like you know, within this, I mean, Marvel, the MCU has so many villains already that you can do certain types of areas where there is um, you know some interesting things. We already saw. With, I, I believe Walt Disney Imagineering posted this reel of um, them creating these like super suits. Um, mm-hmm. Not like incredible super, super <laughs> suits, I was thinking, Frozen, but like these huge um, suits that will bring larger to life characters alive. And one of them definitely looks like Thanos. So mm. I think they are planning a Thanos meet and greet uh, somewhere. So, so you could do Thanos, crazy. which would be It'd insane, be where he would be huge. But you could also have like his weird minions, like the one that like Iron Man calls like Squidward or something. And then like <laughs> the other big guy that you kind of like pop out and like kind of scare you as you're trying to meet Thanos. But like kind of this whole lead up where, you know, there is a lot of that stuff and you could have Agatha there. You could have Ultron there. And honestly, we don't know, but it sounds like Venom from the... From the last movie, I'm not I'm not saying too much. I actually haven't seen it, but someone said that it does connect a little bit to the MCU. Um, if Venom ever does cross over into the MCU, I think that would be another cool meet and greet. But there's definitely a lot of Marvel villains that we've had in the past that you could definitely leverage for a Marvel-themed meet slash scare zone type of thing. You know, like you'd still mm-hmm. meet them, but as you're like walking to one... There's definitely some things that pop out um, that kind of showcase, you know, that who you're about to meet. Yeah, um, I, I think, think that would be, be fun. I think I think that's the direction that they'll head, you know, now yeah. that they've started introducing characters but, yeah. that are on the scary side and there's been a good positive reaction to it. I think that they'll start bringing in, you know, some some of the the other characters and like what we're talking about, I think give them um, their area to work in with. In certain areas, yeah, yeah. And one thing that just kind of came up to me, oh, you know what? I'm going to say this to the end because I know you probably have some thoughts on this. Me being like really into Marvel and Star Wars, you know, I feel like I kind of just go over the next one, which is a Star Wars theme one, but mm-hmm. I do want to ask your uh, opinions on what just came into my mind. So I'll go quickly about uh, stage 17, I think could be like a star Wars area. Um, you know, have another inside section where you can meet some star Wars villains. Um, you could do like Palpatine and his like followers on Exegol and stuff like that. I kind of pop out a Vader experience. That's kind of like, 
um, Luke when he went into the dark side cave uh, in Empire Strikes Back. So kind of like this whole like creepy kind of walk through to meet Vader. But, you know, it's just kind of like ominous and everything. Yeah. Um, maybe you could have Snoke. Maybe you could have Darth Maul. Maybe Kylo Ren. Um, a lot of different things there. Star Wars villain section would be pretty cool. I don't know exactly how you would do that. Um you know, a maze or like a, just a meet and greet with, with just kind, know, of, kind like of a creepy a, vibe. Yeah, I think so. I think kind of a walk through, just having it overall just really like spooky inside. Like, yeah. I mean, we all know Disney is king at like just immersiveness and making you feel like you are in the place yeah. that it's themed around. Just have some like stations where you can like, pose and do yeah, photos with the and villains just, of the past yeah, exactly the Sith of the past Sith yeah and just just extra creepy spots yeah i'd be down with that i think that would be cool all right so this is what i wanted to kind of swing back around just because it is a little more i guess disney focused than like you know the companies that they've acquired and we haven't even talked about where this would be but imagine a Halloween Town. Mm -hmm. I was sorry, not Halloween Town. Like we just watched Halloween Town, but like <laughs> Halloween um, from, from Nightmare. From Nightmare. Nightmare yeah. Where almost everyone in that could be scary, but f kind of funny, you know, kind of yeah. like lighthearted. But you get like those those three, um, mm. I forgot their names, but those three little kids that yeah, are like, oh my ears. gosh. Yeah, yeah, they're the worst. Um, Oogie Boogie uh, and even like Jack Skellington. So like, maybe going through a lot of those things in order to meet Jack and Sally. But mm -hmm. there's a little bit of like a, oh, So it ooh. would be in California Adventure. I mean, we already know that the name of the party is Oogie Boogie Bash. So it's yeah, kind so it of should already. should be over there, yeah. Yeah, like there's already mm. some theming of that within yeah. the party. It's just a matter of where it would go. Where it would probably. go. And, like, and there's not that much space. Fitting. Exactly, yeah. because I was just thinking about it. And the only areas that we've really talked about are on like this side of things, right? So you have yeah, yeah. Cars Land, you have Pixar Pier, you have yeah. the whole pier and wharf area that there's not. I mean, obviously the wharf is kind of more of just food. Yeah, but it's just, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's a lot that isn't being touched as we talk about this. So I don't know what like not, that yeah. wouldn't really be fitting to put in those areas because those That's are already true. very themey yeah very themey yeah and so that might be something that i don't know i don't really know what uh, empty buildings somewhere? i know i was trying to think that too there's not a lot um, of empty but space. there's not really yeah besides like the redwood creek trail i do know that there's um you know like state i think Stage 17 for a while was used as like a cast member uh, area. I think that might be wrong, but I feel like there are some buildings that we don't know about that are kind of used for um, storage and, and things like that. Um, but maybe there's somewhere something, but I could see some sort of nightmare thing happen as well, because honestly that would draw a lot of crowds mm -hmm. um, to do like a nightmare uh, kind of like fully set up as you know, but honestly, would this even fit in in Disneyland that's, that's right what near? I'm because right I feel Haunted like Mansion when it's Nightmare Before yeah. Nightmare Before Christmas, I was just about to there. say that it's already entirely <sighs> themed for Nightmare Before Christmas from September on through the rest of the year. So it's like, is there something around? They could like probably, yeah. I mean, I don't know if there's like a building that could be utilized or it's more just that whole area, you know, like between the French Market restaurant and Haunted Mansion. Yeah. That kind of just becomes that. Or, no, I don't know. Like you the know, line uh, for Haunted Mansion, there's so much space and like space, area between yeah. and like the... um. Like the pet cemetery, like behind the building. Like, may, what if the whole yeah, haunted mansion like a little area tiny walk through somewhere? Yeah, just kind of became. Although that would make things confusing with the line to go on the ride, so maybe not. Yeah. I don't know. Okay, so hear me out. Tell me if you love it or you hate it. I I don't know if I if I love it or I just don't want this to be the case. Okay. What do you have an idea? No, I'm, okay. just, like, I'm just bracing. What myself. if? What if? 
uh, the Columbia, like we talked about earlier, was a pirate's theme type thing. It takes a while to get around the full, you know, rivers of America. Mm-hmm. So you experience some pirates thing there. What if Pirate Slayer, they added nightmare stuff? So you had Oogie Boogie there somehow. And, you know, there's already some like skeleton things there. Um, yeah, no, I don't. Yeah, I'm like, I don't know what. I don't know be that easy it's Because fitting? you just need to have like some characters and it's like separate from everything. It would be better in New Orleans Square right near Haunted Mansion. The but the thing, thing is that Haunted Mansion is really close to the boat that takes you over there. That's all I'm thinking. Like, yeah, if you want to experience some more, just literally walk down there. I guess it. I just feel like having a whole ride dedicated to a whole it. land. Or, um, no, no, no. I'm talking about Haunted Mansion. Oh, okay. Being yeah. totally dedicated to it makes me feel like maybe it doesn't necessarily need, need that, a yeah. whole area separate from that because I feel like there's just a lot more that you could do over there. Yeah, yeah. Um, maybe I don't know. I don't. I don't know. I'm if thinking it's... like is the Columbia Pirate and then the Land Pirate. Yeah, that's kind of a lot too, I guess, but. I but they know. are That's kind of tough. separate. It all comes down to land. Like there's not enough yeah. land. I'm like, oh, not enough right space around in general. Right around, like no uh, empty buildings. Really do too much. Yeah. Not enough empty space. That's yeah. the hard part about Disneyland. Like California Adventure, there's a little bit more wiggle room with, you know, places that they're still kind of figuring out what to do with. Yeah. But Disneyland is a little bit harder. So maybe, I don't know. I, I We're curious to hear your guys' thoughts. Like, where would you, if we did do some sort of nightmare thing, because I do think that there should be a Nightmare Before Christmas area where there is a little bit of a, you know, spooky thing. And those those costumes would be pretty crazy because the claymation on yeah. some of those characters are like, oh my gosh, this is crazy. That would be pretty interesting um, to see. Uh, but yeah, what would you guys do um, in a situation like that? And we also want to hear your thoughts, like, Hit us up. Let us know. Um, should it be a no-go? Should they start leaning into that next year for Oogie Boogie Bash? Um, I don't know. It's a, it's a very interesting topic because Disney is so... It's like... It's, it's honestly perfection. It's like, how do you bring certain new experiences in while also keeping the essence of family-friendly park? And so exactly. we would love to hear your guys' thoughts. We've already talked about it, um, but we know that yeah. you guys probably have some good opinions and on And especially that those of you who have actually been to Oogie Boogie Bash, because we haven't. Yeah. We've seen videos and, like, heard a lot of people talk about it. And, you know, we were there <laughs> during Oogie Boogie Bash, but had to leave, obviously, because yeah. we hadn't bought tickets for it so we haven't like been there and actually seen stuff but we do know that there's not scary stuff aside from the new captain yeah and so with that we uh just want to say happy halloween yeah it's literally in uh, two days oh my gosh from when this episode is coming out so so crazy we hope you have a spooky time Thank you so much for following along. Um, If you know anyone that would like to hear about this spooky stuff before Halloween time comes to an end, shoot it over to them, you know, uh, send them a link to our podcast. Um, We love connecting with more people and um, make sure to just like and subscribe, follow our Instagram. Give us your thoughts on all these things. We'd love to hear from you. We always love replying to people and uh, and discussing thoughts. So definitely hit us up. What did you agree with that we said? What did you not agree with? What would you do different? We'd love to hear from you. Yeah, definitely. And we will see you guys next week on The Happiest Hour on Earth. Have a good one, guys. Have a happy Halloween. Happy Halloween, guys. Bye.